In this video, I'm gonna highlight a common problem that folks have when they're using lookups to look up a price or something that changes over time and uh, how to make sure that when you do that, when you change your price, it doesn't change the past records, the past sales that you've made um, at a certain price that is now changed. So in our example here, we have a list of products in this table. And so these are different uh, clothing items that someone might sell at a clothing store. And we've got um, you know, how much we've received, which comes from the first table here, how much we've sold, which comes from uh, the last table, and then the in stock, which is calculated uh, from those two values. And then we've got a current price here. And so when I sell something, uh, I've got a lookup here that comes from that price, from that current price in the products table. So I have all of these entries of things that I've already sold. And let's pick at these yellow t-shirts that I sold on May 10th for $20 each. But that was years ago and I want to change my price. So I'm gonna go into products and I'm gonna change my price for yellow t-shirts to $30. And instead of just adding that for the current sales or anything in, uh, ahead of now, it's gonna change that for everything, right? If I go back in here, I can see the yellow t-shirts even on May 10th were supposedly $30. So one way to fix this problem would be just to make this a manual field and have to enter in the current price every time I make a sale, but I don't wanna do that. I'm planning on making lots of sales. It's gonna save me a ton of time if I can just have it look up the value rather than me entering. And it'll probably be more accurate because it'll be less error prone. I'll be less likely to make a human mistake. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just rename this field because this field is not necessarily the price that the item was sold on at this date. It's just the current price. And so what I wanna actually say here is just current price. And then I'm gonna create a new field to actually put the sale price. So we'll create a field right next to it. This is gonna be called the sale price. And this is going to be a currency field. Create. And then we're gonna create an automation that just simply copies the current price into the sale price field. And so that when we make a sale, whenever we make that sale, it's just gonna copy the current price into the sale price field. So let's go into the automations here and we'll add a trigger. And so this trigger is gonna be when a record matches certain conditions. Now we could say when a record is created because every time we create a new sale, but the problem with that is that when you actually first create a record, it's just blank. And we need to have at least one piece of information, the product ID, in order for it to look up the current price. So what I'm gonna actually say is when record matches conditions, and then we can say, you know, we're looking in the sold table, and the condition is when the product ID is not empty. So anytime a field goes from the product ID being empty to not empty, this is gonna trigger. And now our action, uh, we can go to our action here, hit update record. And so what we're gonna say is in the sold table again, for the record ID that was that just triggered the automation, right? Because we're just updating that same record. So we'll pick the record ID here. Our fields update is going to be the sale price field. And we're gonna uh, pick this little gear here and change this to a dynamic field so that we can then go ahead, click this plus and choose the current price. And we can actually choose the value of the current price here. And then in here, it gives us a option of different attributes of the current price. So the length, just like the character length, the record ID or the value, meaning the price. So pick the price. Let's turn our automation on and give it a name. Update sale price. And then let's test it out. So let's go into our data here and I'm gonna say, create a new uh, sale here for yellow t-shirts. And looks like, yep, right there, we copied in our current price. If we wanna be really thorough, we also wanna add another automation that updates this if we change the product ID. So I don't know, maybe I created a new record and I accidentally selected yellow t-shirts when I meant to say red t-shirts. So I changed it to red t-shirts and red t-shirts are actually a different price. Uh, we wanna make sure this updates. So let's go back into our automations here and we'll create a new automation. And actually our first automation has the name that really I would use for our second one. So let's change our first one to be called 
paste sale price. I think that's a little more accurate. And then our new one will be update sale price. So this time we're gonna add a trigger when a record is updated. And specifically, we can actually choose in the sold table. Uh, it wants us to pick a view, so we'll pick a view, but then we can have it watch a specific field. So really, we just wanna know when the product ID is changed. So now that we've got our trigger set up, we'll add an action that's gonna to be to update a record. And this is gonna be exactly like the last one. So we go in the sold table, the record ID is the record ID from the trigger. And then we're gonna go and update the sale price field dynamically with the current price. Specifically the value of the current price. Turn that on. Now, if I go back into my data here and I change yellow t-shirts to red t-shirts, then it updates with the correct price. So that's how to keep your prices current in an Airtable inventory. If you wanna learn more about creating inventory systems in Airtable, I recommend checking out this video here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.